Three innings complete of this scheduled seven inning contest. No score between Seton Hill and Clarion. Inning number four starts with a foul tip off the bat of catcher Thomas Slavin, the cleanup hitter for Clarion, facing Michael Bria. Bria has really cruised through the first three innings. And I, I mentioned Roger, he had a terrific 2018 campaign, his first year on the mound for Seton Hill. Six and two, had a 172 ERA and a 1.07 whip. His numbers aren't quite as sparkling this year, but he's been solid once again. He's been invaluable to this team. Maybe the most valuable pitcher last year, which is saying something with some of the talent this staff had. Yeah, Tom and Michael Bria did a real nice job last year, Sean. A lot of injuries to the pitching staff as well last year. Fouled out of play. The count quickly 0-2. Speaking of injuries, Patrick Monteverdi, a junior. What a start for him this season. 28 strikeouts but he is now out for the campaign. The Fox Chapel product will not be able to suit up the rest of the year with an arm injury. This is gonna be a difficult play for Pellis at third, throws it, but no chance. Perfectly placed by Lavin. He'll take his second time on base so far this afternoon. Yeah, swing and bunt by Lavin, the red shirt sophomore out of Kings Mountain, North Carolina. Could not have placed it any better for Lavin. Pitch down in the zone. He becomes the first leadoff hitter to reach for Clarion. Nick Few, the left fielder, steps in. First pitch misses, low and away. Too few. Head into a fielder's choice to end the top of the first inning with a pair of runners on base for Clarion. This Golden Eagles team, Roger, was picked in the preseason poll to finish in last place in the PSAC West, but so far I think that the Golden Eagles have been relatively pleased with their performance as I pitch in for a called strike. Yeah, a lot of times, Sean, I'm not always sure what that voting means, if anything. To me... Well, Seton Hill hopes that it, it plays out correctly for their sake as they were voted the number one team in the PSAC correct. West. But my point being, if I'm Clarion, I'm using that to motivate my kids if I'm Anthony Williams, the head coach. 1-1 one, one pitch, breaking ball, check swing, but it's in for a called strike. Few really was locked up on that one. Yeah, just a splendid pitch from Michael Bria. Well, Clarion really struggled. There's Coach Williams. Clarion a year ago, 11-35, and 35, Roger, just 4-24. and 24 in the conference as this one's lofted out to left field sliding catch. No, no, out of the glove, Sean. Fedor unable to complete the catch. And as a result, the first two runners on base for Clarion, well, Fedor got over, made a sliding effort, had it initially. What's the uh, decision on that one, Roger? Uh, just spoke with Jason Green. He's calling it an air. It was in the glove and out. Let our viewers at home make their own decision. Well, you like the effort there by Fedor, but when it hits the glove like that, it's one that he probably will tell you should have had that one. A prime opportunity now for the Golden Eagles. Two on, nobody out. Ficarilli steps in. Bria spins, but ultimately does not throw to second base. Ficarilli grounded out to shortstop his first time up. Ficarelli came into today's game batting 304. Griffins must be cognizant of a bunt. Instead, he's swinging away, pops it high in the air, but out of play on the right side. Ficarelli is pretty diminutive. He's 5'10", 170 pounds. Looks pretty thin out there, the former Shaler. Stand out, leads the team in runs scored with 16, but right now he's trying to drive in the first runs of this contest. Yeah, if he's at the plate, if I have a batter at the plate right now, Sean, I want him to hit it to the right side of the infield, at least move the runner at second up. Off of the glove of Bankovic to the backstop, both runners advance. So the extra 90 feet for Clary, and now a golden opportunity. Well, you said Ficarelli hit it to the right side. I don't think that's necessarily the game plan now. And that's one that Bankovic probably should have had. Probably should have, Sean. And right now, Ficarelli's batting average just went up 100 points as the Griffins have brought the defense up on the grass slash turf. 
Clarion looking to strike first here. Top of inning number four, two on, nobody out. DeAndre at the shortstop now backs up. It's a pat pitch in the inside corner for a strike. It's one and two. And now Fabri, you're probably thinking, I want to get a strikeout here. Yeah, you got to get a strikeout. DH Tim Irons is on deck. Bria had 19 Ks entering this contest, but had a streak of four consecutive strikeouts earlier in the game. This one lofted to shallow left. It's going to bring home a run as it falls in front of Fedor. The throw home, and as a result of that throw coming through, Ficarelli gets the second. It's 1-0 Clarion. Well, not particularly hard hit, Roger, but a good job by Ficarelli plating the first run in Lavin. Few goes to third, and on the throw, Ficarelli takes second. Yeah, nice job by Anthony Williams in the third base coaching box. I think I would have liked to have seen that ball maybe hitting the cutoff man, preventing the runner from going to second base, keeping the double play alive. Not the case. Tim Iron steps in, coming into today batting 313. Well, Fedor has been a focal point of this half inning so far. Had the air on the sliding catch attempt, the ball that he had in his glove as a train passes in the background here at Seton Hill University. Not uncommon. Irons looking to really give his team command. First pitch breaking ball in for a strike from Bria. Yeah, Michael Bria's done a nice job so far here in the entire game. Couple well-placed hits. Yeah, there's an infield hit this inning, an E7, and then a blooper out to left field. And a pass ball, slash wild pitch, whatever that will be scored. Yeah, I'm thinking that's a pass ball. That's in there for a strike. It's quickly 0-2. Well, he mentioned he wanted to get a strike out against Ficarelli, unable to do so but an opportunity here ahead of the count to maybe sit down irons and keep the runners at second and third respectively. Well, right now the infield's back. They're playing for an out, Sean, some way, somehow. The 0-2. And it hits the batter. So irons to first. The bases are loaded. Still nobody out. You know what? Might be a good time for a timeout by the Griffin coaching staff. And just to let Michael Bria know he's pitching well. Well, that, that was a mistake it. there, and that's right. really, I think, the only major mistake that he's made this inning. Right on the wrist of the batter, Irons. Bases packed full of Golden Eagles. Nobody out, one run already across, and to your point, Roger, at the entire infield meeting at the mound right now with Michael Bria. Seton Hill pitching coach, DJ Cannon. Yeah, right now the Griffins uh, just the recipients of some hard luck in terms of well-placed balls, barely hit, and a couple miscues by the fielders. Coach Maz out there talking with the entire infield and the home plate umpire saying, all right, guys, you've had your time. So what do you expect to see defensively here for Seton Hill, Roger? We've kind of seen a few different looks this inning. At first looked like they well, wanted to try to come home, and to your point, they kind of backed the, the infield off more recently. I think I would play the infielder. I'd play up at the corners at first and third. I'd play deep at second and short. Maybe allow the run from third to score, get a double play, kind of reset the inning, knowing that we have some pretty good bats in our dugout. Maybe two runs won't be such a bad deficit. Cole Schaefer fouls the first pitch back. Schaefer has struggled at the plate this season, batting 213, entering plate today. Struck out looking to end the top of the second in his first A-B. Infield single, E7, bloop single, hit by pitch. That's how it's unfolded so far here in the top of inning number four. Called strike and another 0-2 count. Bria was unable to put away Irons as he plunked him on the 0-2, looking for a different outcome this time against Schaefer. Yeah, I would expect if the balls hit the first or third, they're going to come home for one and then back to first, try to get a double play that way as well. The pitch. Over! Over! On the right side. Goes out of play. Good effort there by Parker Denny, the first baseman, as well as Nick Stotler out in right field, but they just ran out of real estate. Stotler in the outfield is interesting because he has the ability to play 
at first base, and I think early in the season they were maybe targeting him to play first base, but Parker Denny's done a nice job with the bat. Has really solidified that spot at first as he plays in on the edge of the grass, or the turf in this scenario. The green turf, though. Swing and a miss. A big pitch there by Michael Bria as he retires Schaefer for the first out. Yeah, huge, huge strike out there. Just an out in general. Very, very nice by Bria. And now the infield and this defense can get out of the inning with a double play. Right, and only have given up one run. Number nine hitter, Will Constantine, steps in. He was a strikeout victim his first time up. Offering misses maybe a bit high to Constantine. Also right now, a lot of eyes will be on the catcher, Bankovic, making sure that he does his job as a brick wall, not allowing any pass balls or wild pitches to get by him for an easy run to score. A bit of a homecoming for Constantine as he hits this one into the hole off the glove of Law, who is breaking towards second. It scores a pair of runs. Another ball, not particularly a hard hit, but Roger with the defense shifting on the pitch. It pays dividends for Clary and the Golden Eagles now up 3-0. Yeah, right place, right time by Constantine. Not sure what, what Law was moving to second for. Let's take a look. What do you see here, Roger? I'm not sure he saw the ball clearly, Sean. It looked like he broke as soon as contact was made, which is pretty peculiar. Yeah, and right now we come back to the leadoff batter. The first and third, are they gonna go off, start running here? So Few and Ficarelli both scored on that play. Could have, in all likelihood, been a double play. Maybe hit a little too softly to turn two, but at least one out, your figure was gonna be recorded when that ball came off the bat. And as we know, Sean, sometimes the spin on the turf is much like a, a felt pool table. The spins come off a little different. Maybe that one just hung her right toward Albuquerque there. Throw over the first base, back in time, Constantine. Well, Constantine, he struggled as a hitter, and sometimes you just need some luck, Roger, and he certainly got it here. Again, look at Law. He was breaking towards second as soon as that ball was hit. Did not look like he was breaking before it was hit. This one hit high in the air out watch, to left field. Watch for the tag. Ranging over to make the catch, Fedor. Fedor's throw comes home. It's gonna be a close play, not in time. Tim Irons with an athletic slide there. It is now 4-0 as Pallius does his job with the sacrifice fly. Yeah, real nice job. Hopefully we have the replay of the positioning of the catcher bank of it, Sean. I'm gonna see if we can find out where he was positioned in. Okay, he had to come up the line to field the ball. Constantine to second, by the way, on that sack fly. Proper call by the home plate umpire as well. It was a close play and Bankovic did everything he could but just ultimately could not make the tag in time as Ben Barth steps in. Four runs in the top of the fourth inning for Clarion breaking the scoreless contest. Bankovic doing a good job blocking that first pitch from Bria. Ben Barth singled, singled in his last at bat. So four runs go up against Bria aided by an error, aided by some bad luck. How do you make sure, if you're Bria, that you keep the right mindset? Well, that's gonna be something for his teammates and his coaches and his catcher to do once they get back into the dugout. Now, they know Michael Bria, we do not. Is he the kind of person that wants someone talking to him? Or, does, or is he the type of person that understands the situation, exactly what happened, and would he prefer to be left alone? That'll be up to the Griffins to handle in their dugout. From the 1-1-2 one, one, Barth, and instead Bria spins towards second, chasing back the runner, Constantine. Constantine, a two-run single that just got past second baseman Chris Law. Subsequently, the sacrifice fly by Pallius made it 4 nothing. Clarion looking to win this PSAC opener. First of two games between these teams here today. 
And now Bria, maybe a little bit out of that rhythm, steps off the mound. Well, Ben Barth is a leading hitter for the Golden Eagles. One of the leading, he's one of the leading hitters in the conference as well. Constantine doing his best to distract the pitcher, Bria. Hit towards shortstop on the backhand. DeAndre throws across. The throw is in time. The inning comes to an end, but four runs come across. Keyed by a significant error. There was three hits in the frame. As a result, Clarion takes a 4-0 lead to the bottom of the fourth. Seton Hill coming to bat. We continue Griffin's baseball here on the Westmoreland Sports Network.